It's one of the most difficult instruments to mic, and it's the drum set. So Dylan and I took the day at Audio Valley Studios here in Ottawa to show you how to do a basic microphone setup on a set of drums with six mics. And I do have to thank Lawton Audio for sponsoring this video. They supplied the six microphones we're using for this. We have two LA120 pencil mics, two LA220 large condensers, an LS208 and an LS308 for the snare and the kick drum, respectively. Thank you, Lawton. And I'm gonna let Dylan take it away. When we're recording drums, there is what I like to refer to as the cockpit. We've got sort of our hi-hat, our kick, our snare. This is where I'm spending, as a drummer, going to be spending most of my time in most of my parts. There's other elements here. We've got a, a rack tom, we got a floor tom, we got some, some more breakables. Um, and like those are important too, but I'm going to focus in this case, I want to get really good capture of my cockpit instrument. So we've got, we've got a, a, a mic on the snare, we've got a, an out mic on the kick. Normally I would also like to have an in mic on the kick, but again, we've got six mics, so we really have to prioritize what it is that we're doing. Um, so in this case, the two large diaphragm condenser mics, um, I believe are the 220s, I'm going to be putting on the... Uh, just A being on the kit. I want to get as much meat from the overheads as possible. Um, and then my two pencil mics I'm going to be putting on the top, the batter head of the rack tom and the floor tom. I'm not sure. It's, this is my first time I'm going to be using a small diaphragm condenser on a floor tom, so that'll be kind of an interesting experiment. But these are really good mics, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. So here we've got the LS308. This is what we're going to be using as our kick drum mic. A little bit of drum anatomy for you. This is called the resonator head. The head on the other side that the stick, or in this case, the pedal hits, it's called the batter head. So in this case, I want to get the meat of the kick drum. This is a very boomy kick. There's not a ton of padding and uh, absorption material in there. I'm interested to see how this mic is going to react to that. Uh, so we're going to, typically with a kick mic, when it's ported especially like this, I'll try to get a mic inside the kick drum, like right up near the batter head to get that, that click, that attack. But in this case, we're just going to be using the out mic to get the, that, that warm, round sound of the kick drum by itself. So we're, we're not going to have a ton of flexibility just having the one mic, but I, I'm confident that this being a condenser, that it'll give us uh, a lot of variances in the tone that we're able to achieve. All right, so here we've got the LS208 on our snare drum. This is, we're just going to mic snare top in this particular instance. Generally with snare top, the only uh, things that I try to avoid is, number one, this is a condenser mic as well. So we're going to try to keep that away uh, or pointed away from the hi-hat, uh, just because this hi-hat is going to be pretty loud and obnoxious uh, in, in that snare mic. So just to try and maximize our isolation, I want to try and get this mic um, just the business end of it, because this is a front address mic, pointed at the center of the snare drum as much as I can. And also, depending on the part, you've got to factor in what you're actually performing. In this case, I want to try and keep that snare, if I'm doing side stick, or whoever my player is is going to be doing side stick, I want to make sure there's not a huge risk of them whacking the mic. Um, so we're just trying to avoid that. So in this case, I'm going to generally do side stick with this hand. So, And there we go. So I'm, I'm away from it. I'm away from the mic. Um, normally, I, I might also, depending on the snare, depending on the material of the shell, I might mic the shell a little bit, I might mic the bottom. In this case, again, we got six mics, so we're just going to mic snare top, and uh, it's a condenser, so uh, I'm hoping for a lot of brightness. Now, one of the coolest things about these Lawton mics is the ability to shape your sound to what you want. The high pass and the low pass on all of these microphones gives you the freedom when setting up. You can roll off the high end for a bit more warmth or roll off the low end for all the detail in the world. Really, one of the reasons I went with Lawton audio mics for this test, instruments have way more nuances across the frequency ranges and this shaping can make all the difference. I'm micing up the Tom here with one of the LA120s and the, the trick is this is one instrument essentially and we're trying to treat each piece of the, it's like, it's almost like if you were recording a guitar and you're trying to record each of the six strings separately, but they're all next to each other. So how do you do that? How do you maximize isolation? So when I'm trying to angle this, part of the science of, of micing a drum kit is saying, okay, what is threatening the signal coming out of this drum going into the mic? The hi-hat is threatening it. It's right there. The snare. I've got my hi-hat that, that wants to bleed into this mic. I've got my, my, uh, my ride here that wants to get into that mic. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what what's going to be my biggest problem? The hi-hat. The hi-hat's going to be my biggest problem because it's, it's going to be uh, used in this part a lot more than the ride is going to be used. So 
I can deal with a couple little splashes from the ride uh, in the mic. So I'm going to sort of prioritize that and try to get the, the, the sensitive area of the, the pickup pattern of the mic, this cardioid mic, um, as, as far away within reason from the hi-hat as I can. So stretch the mic out here. And also, again, keeping it away from my stick and trying to point it towards the middle of the head as much as I can. Okay, so we're going to try This is a lot of trial and error. You put the mics up, you, you listen to them. If they sound wonky, you can make little tweaks, but th that's ballpark where I think I'm going to have it. So with our floor tom, we kind of got the same thing. Again, this is going to be an interesting experiment for me. I've never used uh, a small diaphragm condenser, i.e. a pencil mic, on a floor tom before. I'm going to probably, on this mic here, I'm going to, I'm going to put on a, the high pass filter a little bit because this is going to be, there's, there's some whiff to that, especially if I hit it with a stick and not my finger. The camera's going to hate that. So is your lapel mic. Yep. <laughs> it's just right, like, <laughs> hanging over the drum. Um, so it's kind of the same thing here. I want to figure out what's, what's really going to threaten this floor tom. Chances are I'm going to be using these in fills most of the time, which means right after I hit this floor tom, 90% of the time, there's gonna be some that or that. So I gotta kinda keep that in mind and try to get this mic away. Well, again, also factoring in where's my stick gonna go? Um, where's my stick gonna go? In this case, we don't do side stick on floor tom, so that's not a concern for me. All right, and then I'm gonna get down low just to see again exactly where that business end is pointed, because I wanna try and get it in the middle of the middle of the head. So I guess I should point out that with the configuration we went with here, you can also use these LA120s as overheads. And they're fantastic overheads at that. They do come with these Omni capsules that you can swap out with the cardioid capsules. And instead of that tight cardioid sound you can get from a pencil mic, you end up with a nice open-ended room miking sound. Now we ended up going with the isolation from the cardioid capsules as the situation we had, but honestly, outside the kick and the snare mics, you can do as you see fit. Also, I did kind of want to showcase the AB setup with the large condensers on the overheads, as you will see coming up. Here we're setting up our LA220s as our overhead mics. Uh, I chose these because of the mics that we have in this kit. They're going to get the most sort of meat and potatoes. There's some elements here that aren't mic'd right now, really. Uh, so I, I want to get as much, um, as much color and tone from that as possible. Pencil mics are great. Typically, I would use pencil mics as overheads in either an XY or like an ORTF position. Really important point when you're setting up overhead mics, bring a measuring tape. You need a measuring tape because you want to make sure that the, the phase of your cockpit, as I referred to earlier, your cockpit instruments, your snare and your kick, but mainly your snare, because the snare is going to be a lot, a lot of your good snare tone is going to come from your overhead. So you want to make sure that the mics are the same, the business end of the mics are the same distance from the center of the snare drum. Whatever position you're doing, whether it's obviously with XY, it's pretty easy because your capsules are generally in the same place. But for something like this, I'm doing kind of an AB pair, as you can see, uh, I wanna make sure that I'm on the same distance. So obviously this mic is much closer. So I'm gonna be backing this mic up a little bit and trying to equalize these because I wanna make sure that the sound that comes from this snare drum arrives at the microphones at the same time. I don't wanna be dealing with phase issues. I don't wanna have to be doing any kind of polarity reversal after the fact if I can avoid it with my overheads. I wanna be able to leave my overheads naturally because if I'm doing polarity reversal or any kind of phase adjustment after the fact, I'm gonna be messing with the phase of the rest of the kit as well just to compensate compensate for the snare. So we've put it all together and we have all the mics exactly where we want them. So then let's check out how it sounds. Remember, just six microphones. We have the one LS308 for the kick, one LS208 for the snare, two LA120s on the toms, and two LA220s as overheads. Listen to the raw audio and then a rough working on the final audio and see which one you like. See if you can get something similar at home too.